Uh, the Honourable Pete Hodgson. Mr Chairman, uh, I have the privilege of representing... I have, I have the privilege of representing the good people of Dunedin North, wherein lie uh, more students than in any other electorate in the country, uh, nearly all of whom come from Otago University. Most of the remainder come from the Otago Polytechnic, and the remainder of those who are not in secondary school are from a number of private tertiary education institutions in town. The student body in Dunedin tonight is not best gruntled. They are not happy. The leadership of Otago University Students Association do not think this is a good idea. They don't think the unusual behaviour in the House this afternoon is good for democracy. They are about to express their viewpoint in the way that they know best as the days and weeks go by. They are not best gruntled. However, what it does mean is that if this bill goes through, an important institution in the electorate of Dunedin North, the Otago University Students Association, will almost certainly become very seriously weakened. Because given the choice of freeloading, given an opportunity to... I'm just being invited by the shoutback host of this party, of this House of Representatives, the, Mr Tohanari, a man who has decibels sufficient to drown out a 737, has got one question. He repeats it endlessly. It is why. Let me tell him. Because given an opportunity... Oh, he's not going to give me... He's not going to let me tell him. He wants to shout me down. Let it be said, Mr Chairman, I'm being shouted down by a half-wit. A half-head on the other side of the House has decided to raise his voice to try and stop me. Silly stuff. Silly, immature, boyish behaviour. So, order, now, order, the order. Honourable... I am compelled to bring some order at this point. I, I think this should be an exchange of ideas, and I'd invite the member to do that. Mr Chairman, I was, I was being invited by the, Mr Tohanari to answer his question. His question was why? Why would it be that on the passage of this bill, Otago University Students Association might become seriously weakened, and it's an important institution in Dunedin? My answer is because given the choice to freeload, most people will take it, and certainly if they do so from a position of ignorance. If they arrive in Dunedin to undertake their study and find that there's an opportunity to reduce their fees by 100 bucks or whatever it is, they will ordinarily take it, especially when they don't know what they're missing out on. That's in the nature of collective responsibility. It's in the nature of collective uh, provision. And Otago University Students Association is responsible for the collective provision of a vast array of services, from medical services to social support services to advocacy services to... Oh, the member opposite, Mr Tohanari, has asked me again what stops them now? What do I do, Mr Chairman? I need your advice. Do I repeat myself? Do I invite the gen I don't repeat myself. Do I invite the gentleman to get another brain because the one he's got at the moment is lonely? Do I do I invite him do I invite him to raise his voice still further? What am I to do, Mr Chairman? Let me see if I can try this technique. Let me try and be let me try and be gentle cop and address my remarks to the minister in the chair. These, this time, I want to address my remarks to the Honourable Heather Roy in respect of Clause 8. And I want to say to her, in seriousness, that a case can be made that there has been a mistake in this clause. Let me spell out my reasoning, if I may. I've got your amendments. Clause 8 takes a, 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 a section of the Principal Act, Section 236A, from memory, and says in respect of one of the subparts, let's remove the words students association fees or any students association fees. In fact, let me read it in case I've made a mistake. No. Section 26, 236A, brackets 1, brackets A, brackets 1, is amended by omitting, quote, and including any students association membership fees, close quote. What does this mean? Well, one needs to go to section 236A of the Principal Act, which is the Education Act 1989, to find out. 
236A uh, of, the, of the Principal Act requires every, every private training institution to basically be honest and upfront about costs. It basically says when a student approaches you, you've got to tell them what all the costs are. So now, Mr Chairman, if I may, yep. let me read from the Principal Act right, and show what the costs are that must be made available in black letter law as it is at the moment. Here they are. The total fees for each course of study or training, including fees for class or lecture materials. Of course, there may not be lecture materials, but if there are. Uh, for books, of course, the student may already have books from their older brother or older auntie or something, but, you know, if they haven't, the costs of those books need to be made available. Special clothing, they may already have the special clothing, but the costs for the special clothing must be made available to them. Safety equipment, the same rule applies, whether they've got it already or not. Tools, whether they have those or not. And any other items that are or may be provided to students enrolled for that course, comma. And including any student association membership fees. So this is a transparency kick. This subclause, this subclause in, the, in the Principal Act is a transparency kick. Whether the student is going to have to buy these, that or the other things or not, or wishes to buy this, that or the other thing or not, including the student membership fee, now voluntary, they are to be told, in every case except the student, the student fee, what the cost is. So if this clause were to pass, the student would be told everything about his or her costs for his or her plumbing course or English language course or whatever, except any student association fee. Now, of course, if there is no student association fee, there's nothing to report or make transparent. But if there is, there's no requirement for the PDE to tell the student about that. And I wonder if we are on such a transparency, free, formal uh, freedom of choice kick, whether or not we could require the PTE in the event of there being a student association, which the student may or may not wish to join, to have the course, the cost of that student association membership made available to them compulsorily. I submit that it is inconsistent to say that special clothing or tools or course fees must be made available, any costs, any costs, if there are any, available to the student, but any costs about a student association fee, if it exists, do not have to be made available to the student. What is going on here? Surely this is a simple mistake. What is happening, can I ask the Minister and the Chair, to, have it, to, to make it a matter of law that every conceivable or reasonable cost except a student association fee or any student association fee is to be made transparent? What is going on here? It would seem to me that Act Party philosophy has stumbled at the edges a little. And I wonder if the minister would be kind enough to give us the benefit of her wisdom on why it is that the ACT Party legislation has done this. I don't see it to be consistent. I don't think it's sensible for us to require in law, as we have done for the last 20 years. Well, I just say to the Honourable Tohanari in brief re repost that if he would like to take the call and explain why it is that special tools have to be costed and provided to the... Will the member take the call? Will the member undertake to not provide the House with yet another closure motion? Ah, so no undertaking is being offered. The member's get asking me to shut down, sit down, in order that he can attempt to shut down the entire debate, and the question I reasonably ask goes unanswered by a group of people on the far side who have become specialised in the art of arrogance. Well, I'm not about to resume my seat without uh, such, uh, uh, such, an undertaking from, such an undertaking from the member. If he would like to give me an undertaking that he would attempt to answer this reasonable question. Did, he, did I hear him say... I'm sorry? Can I just ask the member, did I hear him say he would attempt such an answer? No. I heard him say, hurry up. Can I just say to the honourable member, it isn't consistent for us to decide that special tools costs, special clothing costs, safety costs, different fees must all be made available to the student, but the cost of any student's association fee need not be made available. That isn't consistent. It isn't the transparency kick that the ACT Party uh, uh, prides itself on, 
I would uh, enjoin the minister and the chair to take, the, take a call to offer us uh, her views of that matter, but I don't think that that question is uh, an unreasonable one. I think it does need to be addressed. I think the House would be uh, benefited if the uh, minister were to let us know <coughs> what she thinks is behind that or if she were to seek the advice of, from her officials to say what they think might be behind it. But, Mr Chairman... Keep calling, David. Uh, Honourable Sir Roger Douglas. 